Shalom Chavarim. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Those of you joining us here on live stream, as well as those uh, that will be watching in a few minutes on YouTube from this particular point now. So Israeli News Live, live stream, and Israeli News Live on YouTube. Real quick, before I get into the breaking news that is going on about leaked information that the Ukrainian government, the head of the DNI, has said he is prepared to do the attack on the Donetsk region, I wanted to share with you, this is what they tried to block from me the other day. Uh, I had forgot that I had photographed it with my phone. It was under Twitter, Donbass, Kiev, Ukraine, uh, NATO, OSCE, UNEU. Uh, this was all about the fact that they had planned, they're planning, Kiev is planning on doing a chemical attack on the Donbass uh, or the Donetsk region there. That is the eastern Ukraines. Now, the sad part of this, guys, is that they're going to blame it on someone else. This is already pretty well known. Uh, and I'm going to share with you again what we did yesterday in the news because this is very serious information that's coming out. So let's get right into it. This is what I had. This just came out a couple of days ago. In Kiev, the plan is considered a possible airstrike on the capital of Donetsk People's Republic. Donetsk is expected to suppress the population through air attacks with chemical weapons, i.a. New Russia. That's what they're calling, by the way, the, uh, the people that live there in eastern Ukraine call it the New Russia. The interior, excuse me, the initiator is a terrible operations attack uh, excuse me, Operation NSDC Secretary uh, Alexander uh, Turkyanov uh, Turk told uh, Kerasin politician Alexei Zeravoka, Zeravoko, I may be pronouncing their names wrong. Uh, I don't have Yana in here to tell me about these things. She speaks Russian. My father-in-law speaks Ukraine. Uh, which is similar to Russian. The day before yesterday, he says, I received the inside information of the Ministry of Defense of Ukraine that the General Staff of Ukraine is developing a military operation on the territory of Donetsk involving aircraft and applying the air bombing with chemical weapons. I know that most of the generals against such an operation, they're against the operation. During this special operation is, they call him the bloody pastor, Took an oath. He is, by the way, the head guy for uh, Ukraine's. Uh, he's, the, he's, the, he's the minister of defense, so to speak. He is the chief in command for their defense. Uh, guy looks like a Nazi, if you ask me. But anyway, uh, he goes on to say, uh, "For me, every loss of human life it is a tragedy, tragedy and a pain. I appeal to the world community: Do not you see what he is doing today?" Bloody the power that you have brought to Ukraine. Open your eyes to the problem of pain and tragedy that is happening in Ukraine. Now, guys, we just reported, because we're going to get into what's about to happen. I'm going to, I got to bring this out to you though, real quick. I brought this news to you yesterday in a breaking news because it's on the verge of a major attack and we're being lied to. We're being, guys, listen, you are watching on live stream right now, the American public not the public, but the American military commanders and things are lying to us. They're outright lying to us as if we're some kind of dumb idiots here. All right. You let me just show you right here. The UN rings and alarm bells on record number of civilian casualties in eastern Ukraine. These casualties, eastern Ukraine, these are pro-Russian. I just watched today where they go through the streets. Ukraine soldiers. Now, some of these are even from 2015, et cetera. Some of the videos that I was watching today, they kind of compiled them together and they just go along and just start shooting people walking down the road. They didn't even care. They don't care. This is, that, this is the neo-Nazi government that was put into place with Poroshenko that the United States, as Obama admitted, this isn't the United States government. This isn't the United States people. This is that Obama administration. And now they're about to put Hillary Clinton into power as president when she murdered the people in Benghazi. She's been the biggest arms dealer. She has caused more havoc in the world than anyone else. She's the reason why Libya is being bombed. She's the reason why all, this is the whole reason we have Syria in the turmoil it is. Oh my gosh, this is nuts. Anyway, it says here clearly, 
civilian casualties in eastern Ukraine. Neither, excuse me, neither the Ukraine forces nor the armed groups are taking the necessary precautions to protect civilians. Okay, so they're taught, now she's noticed it's armed groups. Even PBS, guys, PBS does a two-day documentary. And of course, they're, they're longer than two days filming it, but it, it aired for two days, and you don't see a bunch of Russian soldiers in the country. Is Russia sending in tanks and arms and supplies? Absolutely. They even sent their currency there for them to use, for God's sake. It's not just that, it's everything. All right, but the civilian casualty figures in eastern Ukraine have risen dramatically in the past two months. The UN High Commission for Human Rights, Ziad Rad al Hussein, warned on Wednesday, calling on parties of the conflict to prioritize the protection of civilian and take urgent steps to de escalate the increased tension situation in the contact line. But the Ukrainian forces continue to bomb residential areas, killing as many civilians as they can. They just don't care. Watch this. He documents 69 civilian casualties in the eastern Ukraine in 2016, including 12 dead and 57 injured. This was nearly double the figure for May. All right. Now, I'm going to show you something. This guy right here on the daily vertical, he's going to lie to you. Brian Whitmore. He's going to tell you, if you can hear it, I don't know. It wasn't just the deadliest month in a year for Ukrainian soldiers. According to statistics released this week by the United Nations, it was also the deadliest month in a year for Ukrainian civilians as well. Ukrainian civilians. Eight civilians were killed and 65 were wounded in July, according to the UN. According to the UN. Better. He's right. 12 were killed and 57 wounded. So in case anybody... Exactly. Yet, 12 dead, 57 wounded. Stick a fork in the mid ceasefire agreement because it's done. The conflict in the Donbass is shaping up to be a war without end. Letting you it's know they're going to attack. Because Vladimir Putin's regime is not going to accept but any settlement. It's Putin's it's fault. De facto veto. Oh gosh, it's Vladimir Putin's fault. It has nothing to do with Ukraine. And those dead, he just calls them Ukraine citizens. You see, guys, it's lying to us. It's a, it's a roundabout way to make it look like Russia's, their forces are in there killing Ukraine citizens. No, it's Eastern Ukraine citizens. It is the Russian people that they could care less about. And I just show you where they're planning on doing a chemical attack. Now, this is a guy right here, Toy, uh, Turk, uh, Turkinov, Secretary of National, uh, Secretary of National uh, Security, of Ukraine. And this was from Storm uh, Bringer. He brings out that the general staff of Ukraine is developing military operation on the territory of Donetsk involving aircraft with the use of strikes of chemical weapons. Does it not sound familiar? Isn't that what happened in Syria on September the 23rd of 2013? That the United States, President Obama gets up there and says, Bashar al-Assad is gassing his people and we must go in there and rescue the Syrian people when it turns out that it was the United States involved in it anyway, according to Hershey and two other major well-known journalists, as well as according to Aaron Erdem, the MP of Turkey, long before there was a problem with Turkey and the United States. They had great relationships when Aaron reported this, but he spilled the beans. He was the whistleblower, and the United States got implicated for allowing that sarin gas to go in there. Isn't that what happened in Benghazi? Isn't that what happened in Egypt and all these other places, guys? Isn't that what happened? Sure it is. So NATO, or at least some of the people in NATO, particularly maybe the Obama administration, this isn't our American people. This isn't the good people that love and godly believing Americans that are like this. This is that nice Obama administration with Hil Hillary Clinton ready to throw everybody to a war and kill everybody. Now, let's go to the breaking story. This is what we have been bringing out for you already. You know that. Now you see more evidence of what they're planning on doing, but that's not all. Guys, guess what we got going on now? Now it's only going to get even nastier. And let's take a look exactly what's happening and what's coming down the pipe here. Okay, this is the live journal. This right here, it's in the Russian language. It came out exactly at 7.48 p.m. It was published here. You guys, I know you can't read a bit of Russian. Neither can I. My wife can sure read it, though, with no problem like a genius. All right, so 
Let's take, and by the way, I have a constantly working on these things. Let me get this thing blown up for you, though. For those of you that can read Russian, let's take a look here. You know, they got Joseph Stalin up there. Okay, whatever. Don't really care about that. Like I said, I'm not for communism. I wouldn't want to live under communism, period. It's not the right kind of life. It's a socialistic life. And yes, all the poor people stay poor. And of course, the leaders stay wealthy. People always remind me that about Vladimir Putin. I'm not here to throw Vladimir Putin under the bus because I can tell you, I already see the world's media throw him under the bus as it is. That's our point. We're trying to tell you the truth. When it's nothing but a global media bias, we're trying to bring out some truths. So I know you guys can't read this. So we take the liberty here to give you a little bit of inside to let you see exactly what it does say. Uh, and let me see if I can blow this up. Uh, I guess the only way I can do this is kind of blow up the the text of it right here. All right, now, close that. Okay, that might give it a little bit bigger. The head of the DNI said that Ukraine's army is prepared to attack and assured that the Minsk three will be gone. Did, did we not just hear that a second ago? What, 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 did, the, what did the guy say? Let me, let me bring him back up for you real quick. All right, I want to make sure that he is well respected for his nice uh, things that he says. Uh, Mr. Uh, with the Daily Vertical. Okay. Brian Whitmore. Brian Whitmore. Brian Whitmore said you can stick a fork in it. It's done. Okay. Just so we know what we're talking about, guys. So anyway, Ukraine's army prepared to attack and assure that the Minsk three will be gone if Ukraine authorities decide to forget about the Minsk agreements and attack uh, the Donbass, then they should not complain retreating to Kiev. This was stated by the head of the Donetsk People Republic, Alexander uh, Zokro, uh, Ken Ken Kenoko. Excuse me. I can't pronounce Alex Alex's name either. Now, keeping that in mind, take a look at this over here again. Let's just see something on this chemical weapons attack. Kind of bear with me, guys. I'm going through this with you because some of this is breaking. So as I'm going through some of the information here, um, yeah, here we go right here. He told the C, the NSDC security, uh, Alexander Torkinov told Kirsten's politician, Alex Zerovoko, the same guy. Now they spell it a little different here in this here, but the initiator is a terrible operation, NSDC, Secretary, Mr. Toykonov, who is, of course, as you already know, he's the head there. He told that to the head of the new Russia, so to speak there. He told him that they're going to attack, they're preparing attack, and they're planning on using chemical weapons. You know, it's probably more or less one of these things that's being done under the table. And I realize, guys, we could say, okay, who do we really want to believe? Do we want to believe the honest, God-fearing Kiev people who are the Roman Catholics fighting the war for the Pope? Or do we want to believe instead the Russian Orthodox Catholics that are fighting the war for Vladimir Putin? Okay, come on, guys, give me a break. All right? The issue is... I, have, I see one lie after another after another. When I see this guy, the American nice journalist guy, tell us and lie to us about who really died, and he doesn't bother to tell you. See, he doesn't say, notice his terminology. He never says anything about, oh, well, they were killed by the Russians. He doesn't say that. He does omit that, doesn't he? No, because they're killed by Ukraine soldiers. It was the biggest death toll for the Ukraine soldiers this month, but it's also the biggest death in the war for Ukrainian civilians who were killed by Ukraine soldiers. That's the part he failed to tell you. Anyway, then they should not complain. Now, this is because what Alex says, Alexander is saying that they're going to fight back. That's his point. On the other side of the front line, all ready to attack. These are our intelligence from the point of view of political. It is from Kiev to undermine the Minsk process. Even more offensive, Kiev closes the Minsk process. Uh, and that was quoted by Zarkanov on, on their own website. So, and I've been seeing this already now for the last two days. I have saw Alex has actually made a public statement. I, I did record his news broadcast. I think I have it on here somewhere. He realizes that Ukraine is ready to attack them. Uh, and I don't know if I have that video handy for you guys. I really don't know. I don't think I do. 
uh, but he knows that they're prepared to attack and it's about to happen at any time. Now here is the major issue. NATO has really been helping Ukraine a lot. Now the United States probably directly will not be involved in the war. Indirectly, yes. They're going to do the intelligence. They're going to do all kinds of things. They're even, they will even make sure that it appears to the rest of the world if chemical weapons are used. Now, according to the quote there, they're going to use them. Now, perhaps if enough of this is made known to the world, they may back off because there's too much evidence against them that the chemical weapons may be used. Because if chemical weapons are used in Ukraine, on eastern Ukraine, on the Russian population that is there, the world's going to know that Ukraine did it. Even though they're going to bring out the mass media that the Russians did it. Well, you're hearing it right now. The Russians didn't do it. The evidence is there, although it's very suppressed. Hardly no one knows about it. It is majorly suppressed. Now, here comes the other major issue in all of this. China, again, another news broadcast comes out. China's about to start war with the U.S. Now, is this really true? Gosh, I have no idea. And I'm trying to find a way to get up here to blow the thing up, but I can't get my cursor. There it is. So you can see this one right here. We already know there's a lot of tension in the South China Sea. It says China is about to start a war with the U.S. Massive preparations are underway. Now, we know that there's drills going already with China, but Russia is also, their naval fleet is en route to China. At least part of it is. To also participate in a drill. Now, what's interesting to me, if you ever watch Crimea The Way Home, the documentary done by uh, Russian television about Crimea and what Russia did in order to be able to take this part uh, back under their own wing, Putin makes an interesting comment. He says, when you see, and it's just paraphrasing his words, but he talks about when you see these events happening and we see this talk of military drills. He said it's normally more than a military drill. In fact, during the, the event where the United Nations went into the Black Sea, Russia said he, uh, Putin said he actually put his defense missiles, nuclear capability, everything, he put it there to where the UNATO would know he was there and he wasn't playing games. Because he said that the U.S. military was coming in to take Crimea back. He said, but we intentionally put everything in the open so that their satellites could pick up that we've moved in and that we weren't going to allow Crimea to fall. So war games, guys, can be a lot more serious than what we realize. Anyway, Chinese believes that national security of the country is seriously threatened. The situation in the South China Sea could escalate quickly. The Chinese Defense Minister Cheng uh, Wang Quan believes that the tensions between current players in the South China Sea lead to a conflict. Therefore, it is necessary that the military police everywhere else aware that the fact that China's sovereignty and territory integrity must be protected. I think it's kind of interesting. Uh, oh, guys, I'm sorry, guys. You, got, you guys don't even see what I'm reading here. I think it's very interesting that we're seeing this with China Right now, we're seeing that China, and this is on uh, Mirror Spectrum, your daily source of news, that we're seeing this at the same time where Ukraine is about to launch an attack on East Ukraine. Russia, no doubt, China as well, no, no doubt, knows that if there is a military confrontation in Ukraine of a large scale, especially if chemical weapons are used, Russia is going to intervene. They can blame Russia all they want for it. They can blame the East Ukraines of chemical uh, gassing their own people and then justify even more of an attack, which is another thing that I have found written in some of the documentations about the war. They believe that, in fact, even in this, uh, this one right here on the, uh, this Russian website here, they're stating in there that Ukraine is going to create a, an event that makes it appear that the Russians have struck first and that they're forced to go into it. Now, let me remind you, all right, just so you guys know, let's go back just for a reminder. I think we need a reminder on this. Uh, we brought this out to show timelines. This was our own 
On your screen here, this is when we shared with the world, Ukraine on July the 8th was bringing tanks to the front line. Okay? Ukraine was already bringing the tanks up to the front line, as you can see here. 40, uh, roughly 40 tanks, not counting armored personnel, were brought to the contact line. Okay? We don't need all the volume on it. Anyway, so they brought up, Ukraine already brought this up to the contact line. Now, Russia, yes, they did respond. July the 19th, this is Ukrainian news, brings out that the Russians on rail cars brought in about a dozen tanks. Old Russian style tanks here were brought in as well. Now that was showed to the Western media as well, that Russia's moving tanks into the area. They didn't bother to show you what I showed you. No. Western media wasn't about to tell you what was going on there. Even though it was shared thousands of times with the rest of the world, no one else wanted to pick that up. Oh, that just must be propaganda. And people, you know what really gets me is when I get the comments on YouTube where people will say, that's not, in, that's not on CNN, we just don't believe it. Has anybody ever noticed where most of these news outlets get their news? Go to Twitter. Okay, now, so yes, on the 19th, 11 days later, Russia's bringing in their tanks to help out Donetsk. Because see, what they're trying to do, they're trying to get Russia to bring their military in. That's why we have all NATO forces on Poland and Latvia and Estonia and all these places like that. They're trying to get Russia to make the move because NATO wants to attack. Now, I don't think all NATO members want to. I really don't. The Germans are showing some reluctantness to do it, so are the French. So Britain exits the EU, and some are suggesting that the exit was done intentionally so that, the, that Britain and the United States could attack Russia on their own if needed to. I don't know. Then we got the video that we shared with you just the other day. This is the actual Russian tanks on the street in Ukraine. I got a couple of sources on this already. And they're saying that, yes, they're in the Donetsk region. So, yes, they are prepared. But I don't know if they're prepared for a chemical attack. Doubtfully. Because these guys, some of them, yes, they're mercenaries. Sure, they're Russian citizens. I don't doubt that. You know? Russia's playing it very quiet on how they're trying to help the eastern Ukraines. They're trying to give them just enough to offset the balance so it doesn't end up into a total massacre. But I don't know if, it's gonna, if that's going to stop anything. And of course, International Business Times has warned before, Ukraine, U.S. plotting to use chemical weapons against Donetsk rebels, Russian media claims. Well, they're making the claim again, guys. So hopefully, if we can get this video, if you will share this video everywhere, maybe, just maybe, maybe there might be some human lives saved as a result. Maybe, even if they do make their attack. I pray to God that it's not with chemical weapons. I pray somebody will get this video in the right hands. Even Alex Jones, he's got enough uh, ability to share this with far more people in the world than I do. Brother Begley, anybody that can share it, everyone. Brother Begley does share a lot of these breaking stories. Anybody, whatever you can do to get it out there. I don't care, I don't care about numbers, I don't care about popularity. I'm not here for that. I've dedicated my life to serve Yeshua HaMashiach, the Lord Jesus Christ, for the sake of my own people, the Jewish people. And let me tell you something. That's why one reason why Ukraine really matters to me. Because you know who else is at risk in Ukraine? Besides the Russian people, it's the Jews that live there. Because the Ukrainians go against the Jews as well. They are neo-Nazis. They hate Jews. They hate Russians. I know. My father-in-law, Ukrainian Jew. So we know what it's like. This is not just some secondhand information, guys. We know what's going on. And we're trying to get this out to the world. And I, I can't tell you enough for my own people. We need to go home. We need to go back to Israel. People like myself, it's harder for us. We have come here to the Czech Republic because Israel will not just open their arms to us to come home. 
because I am a believer in Jesus Christ. I believe that Yeshua is the Messiah, and I openly pro proclaim it. So I'm just not welcome, especially as a public figure. If I kind of kept it to myself, then maybe. It's not easy, guys. God bless you. Thank you for watching. Thank you guys for watching here on live stream as well. I hope you guys are able to see it. The battery is about to die on my phone, and I hope that we can do something. It's going to be on YouTube. That's where I'm asking you to share it at. It mainly is on YouTube. Get it to anybody and everybody you possibly can. True News, anybody, any Christian outlet that will listen, that where somebody might have some compassion for humanity and not just figure, oh, well, they're just Russians. No, Russians are human beings as well. Just like Americans. Many good Americans. America's not bad because Americans. It's bad because the administration that's currently in charge right now and can only get worse if Hillary gets in charge. But the American people are good people. The American soldiers are good men and women that fight in the armed forces there. Russians are no different, guys. They love. They care. They're just like American people. We gotta remember it's humanity that's at stake. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live. Ain Shalom. There is no peace. I have to say Ain Shalom. Anyway, those of you that, by the way, real quick, let me just mention this. We are doing Hebrew lessons. I'll be doing another one here uh, probably tomorrow. Load it on my wife's channel, Rise Up Children of God. That's her channel, Rise Up Children of God. If you want to be a part of the Hebrew lessons that we're teaching there, we're we going slow with it there. We've created already a little subsection on her channel for that as well. Thank you. Thank you for, for watching. And also we thank you for those that support the work that we do here. IsraeliNewsLive.org or IsraelReturns.com. Shalom.